In this video, we'll talk about how to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. The basic property that we need for solving exponential and logarithmic equations is the one-to-one -one property. Suppose that b is a positive real number, such that b is not equal to 1. In other words, we're assuming that b can work as a base for an exponential function or a logarithmic function. If s and t are any algebraic expressions, then b to the s is equal to b to the t if and only if s is equal to t. In other words, if you have two equal exponentials and they have the same base, then their exponents must be the same. The same is true of logarithms. If log base b of s is equal to log base b of t, then it must be the case that s is equal to t. If you have two logarithms that are equal to each other and they have the same base, then their arguments, s and t, must be equal to each other. These are the properties that we use when solving exponential and logarithmic equations. Let's do several examples. The first one, solve for x if 3 to the 5x is equal to 3 to the 2x plus 7. Here we have two exponentials that are equal. They have the same base, which is 3. And that means that you have two equal exponentials with the same base, and therefore their exponents must be the same. So, in other words, 5x is equal to 2x plus 7. So now it's just a matter of solving for x. Subtract 2x from both sides, and you have 3x is equal to 7. Divide everything by 3, and x is equal to 7 thirds. And that's your answer. You can check this by plugging it back into your original expression to see if you get the same answer, and in this case you will. Here's another one. Solve for x if 2 to the 3x minus 1 is equal to 8 to the 4x. Here we have two exponentials which are equal, but notice they don't have the same bases. This is base 2 and this is base 8. Of course, this is easy to fix because 8 is equal to 2 cubed. So we can rewrite this expression 8 to the 4x so that it has base 2. Let's do that. 2 to the 3x minus 1 is equal to 8 to the 4x, but I'm going to rewrite 8 as 2 cubed that raised to the 4x. So here we have an exponential raised to an exponent, so you multiply the exponents together. So we'll have 2 to the 3x minus 1 is equal to 2 to the 3 times 4x, which of course is 2 to the 12x. Now we have two exponentials that have the same base, and they're equal to each other. That means the exponents must be equal to one another. So this 3x minus 1 must be equal to that 12x. 3x minus 1 is equal to 12x. So again, we can subtract 3x from both sides. Then we'll have minus 1 is equal to 9x. So divide everything by 9. So negative 1 over 9 is equal to x. And that's your answer. Let's do another example. Solve for x if e to the 4x is equal to 14. So here we have an exponential on the left, which is base e, and this is equal to 14. In this case, it's not obvious that you can write 14 as an exponential with base e, but it's actually possible using the cancellation law. 14 is equal to e to the ln of 14. e raised to the power of e that gives you 14 will give you 14. ln is log base e, so the cancellation law tells you that these will cancel out and leave you with 14. So we can rewrite this as e to the 4x equals e to the ln of 14. And now we have two equal exponentials having the same base e. So that means their exponents must be the same. So 4x is equal to ln of 14 
divide everything by 4, and you'll have x is equal to ln of 14 divided by 4. That's not the only way you could do it. You could start with this e to the 4x equals 14, and you could simply apply the natural logarithm to both sides. ln of e to the 4x equals ln of 14. Now you could use the other version of the cancellation law. ln of e to the 4x is just going to give you 4x. Equals the natural logarithm of 14, and then you divide everything by 4, and you get the same answer. x equals the natural logarithm of 14 over 4. Let's do another example. Solve for x if e to the x squared equals e to the 4x plus 5. Well, already we have two exponentials that are equal to each other with the same base. So once again, that tells us that their exponents must be equal to one another. So x squared is equal to 4x plus 5. So x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. Getting everything on one side of the equation. We did this because this is a quadratic equation, and now we can solve it either using the quadratic formula or factoring. I think we can factor pretty easily in this case. x times x gives you x squared. 5 times 1 gives you 5. It needs to, one of these needs to be negative and one of them needs to be positive. And the largest one needs to be negative because we have a negative 4x here. So negative 5 plus 1 gives you a negative 4. Negative 5 times 1 gives you a negative 5. So that tells us that x is equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 1. So either one of these should give you a solution. We can just double check if we want. You can always check just by plugging in the x value. So x equals 5. Does this give us an equality? e to the 5 squared, is this equal to e to the 4 times 5 plus 5? Well, this is e to the 25. And this one is e to the 20 plus 5, which of course is also e to the 25. So yes, check. That one does work. What about x equals negative 1? So on the left side, we have e to the negative 1 quantity squared. And does this equal e to the 4 times negative 1 plus 5? And it certainly does, because on the left, we have e to the negative 1 squared is 1, so it's e to the 1. And on the right, we have e to the negative 4 plus 5, which is also e to the 1. So these two things are, in fact, equal. Check. So it does work. Let's look at another example. Solve for x if you have the following equation. e to the 2x plus 4 times e to the x minus 12 equals 0. So here, we're going to use the fact that we can rewrite e to the 2x as e to the x quantity squared. You might wonder why that's helpful. Well, let's just rewrite this e to the 2x in that way. So this is e to the x quantity squared plus 4 times e to the x minus 12 equals 0. So this isn't a quadratic equation in terms of x, but it is quadratic in terms of e to the x. If you think of this e to the x as being some quantity, we have that quantity squared plus 4 times that quantity minus 12 equals 0. So we can solve for e to the x using either the quadratic formula or we could try to factor it. So we could try to factor it and see if that works. So how do you get e to the x quantity squared? That's e to the x times e to the x. Here we need a product to give us negative 12. So that means they're going to have opposite signs. So one will be positive and one will be negative. So their product has to be 12 and since the signs are opposite, their difference has to be 4. So how can we get that? Well, 6 times 2 will do that. 6 times 2 gives us 12, and the difference of 6 and 2 is 4. 
So what does this tell us? This tells us that either one of these factors has to be 0. e to the x plus 6 equals 0, or e to the x minus 2 equals 0. Well, the first one is impossible, because this tells us that e to the x equals negative 6. e to the x can't be a negative number, so this is not possible. So we don't even worry about that. But this other one, e to the x minus 2 equals 0, that is possible e to the x equals 2. So what does that tell us? That tells us that x is the power of e that gives us 2. So that's our solution, x equals ln of 2. So we only have one solution in this case. Let's look at another example. Solve for x if 3 to the x plus 4 equals 2 to the 2x minus 1. Well, again, these two don't have the same base, so you could play the same sort of game where you write 2, if you wanted to, for example, you could write 2 as 3 times log base 3 of 2, and that would allow you, that would allow you to plug this in for 2, and then you'd have the same base, which is 3. That's working just a little bit too hard. Instead of that, use ln on both sides. So that gives us ln of the left side, 3 to the x plus 4, equals ln of the right side, 2 to the 2x minus 1. You see, our ultimate goal is to solve for x, but in order to do that, we need to get the x out of the exponent, and that's really what logarithms do for you, because now I can take the exponents out, so this becomes x plus 4 times ln of 3 equals, and now I'm going to take that exponent out, so it's going to come down in front here, just like this one did. It came down in front. We're going to have 2x minus 1 times ln of 2. And now, these are all linear in terms of x. We have x to the 1. So these are all linear in terms of x, so we just solve for x. Solve for x in the usual way. So we distribute on the left. This will be x ln of 3 plus 4 ln of 3 equals 2x ln of 2 minus ln of 2. Now we want to get all of the x's together, so we'll subtract 2x ln of 2 from both sides, then we'll have them all on the left. So that'll give us x ln of 3 minus 2x ln of 2. And then we also want to subtract this for ln of 3 from both sides. So we're going to have minus ln of 2 minus 4 ln of 3. So we're subtracting this from both sides, so I should put it over here as well, x ln of 2. And then we're going to subtract this one from both sides, so I should subtract it over here like this, like so. OK, so now all of the x's are on the left, and everything on the right doesn't have an x. So now we factor out the x on the left, ln of 3 minus 2 ln of 2. So we've just factored out the x. This is going to be equal to minus ln of 2 minus 4 ln of 3. And now we just divide by this term. So we're going to have x is equal to minus ln of 2 minus 4 times ln of 3. And all of that is divided by ln of 3 minus 2 ln of 2. We've been solving exponential equations using logarithms, but we can also solve logarithmic equations. Here, for example, we want to solve for x if log base 2 of x plus 3 plus log base 2 of x plus 1 is equal to 3. So there are a number of ways you can go about doing problems like this. So I think the first thing I want to do is I want to notice that these are two logarithms with the same base. So if you add them together, that's the same as multiplying the two arguments. So this is like log base 2 of x plus 3 times x plus 1. 
is equal to 3. So what that says is that 3 is the power of 2 that gives us x plus 3 times x plus 1. So in other words, 2 raised to the 3 equals x plus 3 times x plus 1. Notice we don't have any logarithms anymore. 2 to the 3 is 8. So this is 8 equals x plus 3 times x plus 1. We want to solve this for x. In order to do that, we need to get all of these terms together. We want to write this as a quadratic, and we need to combine this 8 into the quadratic. So the first thing to do is to multiply out these two terms. So this is x squared plus 3x plus 1x. So let's just write all that out. 3x plus 1x plus 3 times 1 is 3. So 8 equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. Next, we subtract the 8 from both sides. So we'll have 0 is equal to x squared plus 4x. 3 minus 8 is a negative 5. So here we have a quadratic, and we can solve that quadratic by factoring in this case. So 0 is equal to the product. So x times x gives us x squared. 5 times 1 gives us 5, and we need a plus and a minus. 5 minus 1 gives us 4, and 5 times a negative 1 gives us negative 5. So that tells us that x is equal to negative 5, and, or x is equal to 1. And those are the solutions to our, our logarithmic equation. Well, or are they? Sometimes, when solving equations involving logarithms, we find solutions that are outside the domain of the original equation. We call these solutions extraneous solutions, and those must be discarded. So for our next example, we want to check the solutions from the previous example to see if they really are solutions or if they're extraneous. Let's just go back. Our solutions are right here. x equals negative 5 and x equals 1. Are those solutions to this equation? Well, immediately we can see that there's a problem. If you plug in x equals 1, that's OK, because log of log base 2 of 1 plus 3 is defined and log base 2 of 1 plus 1, that's also defined. But what about this negative 5? If you plug in x equals negative 5, you're going to have a logarithm of negative 2 here. And here you'll have a logarithm of negative 4, and that's not allowed. So we see that we see that x equals negative 5 is an extraneous solution. So that means we discard it. So the only solution is x equals 1. So just to restate that, let's go back to our equation here. If we try to plug in x equals negative 5, we're going to end up with logarithms of negative numbers, and that's not allowed. That's why we have to discard x equals negative 5. x equals 1 works, however. The reason that we found this problem is simply that we got rid of the logarithm. We removed the logarithm so we didn't see that we had a negative a problem with a negative number here. However, that's the case. Let's do another example. Again, We'll solve this logarithmic equation for x, and we'll have to check to see if there are any extraneous solutions. This equation is log base 10 of x plus 1 plus log base 10 of x minus 2 equals 1. Once again, we're going to combine the logarithm terms. If you're adding two logarithms, that's the same as computing the logarithm of, their, of the product of those factors. So this is log of x plus 1 times x minus 2. And this is equal to 1. So 1 is the power of 10 that gives us this product. In other words, x plus 1 times x minus 2 is equal to 10 to the 1, or just 10. Let's expand this product. 
x times x is x squared minus 2x plus x minus 2 equals 10. x squared minus x. And then we want to subtract 10 from both sides. So we'll have minus 12 equals 0. We factor. x times x gives us x squared. Here we want a product of 12 and a difference of 1. So that sounds like 3 and 4. We want the larger one to have the minus sign because it's a negative x there. All right, so our solutions are x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. But we have to check to see if any of these are extraneous. That just means plugging in x equals 3 and x equals 4 to see if they're inside the domain of our equation. So x equals 4, for example, is no problem. Because if you plug in x equals 4, you get log of 5 here and log of 2 here. That's fine. So x equals 4, that one's OK. But what about x equals negative 3? If we plug in a negative 3 here for x, we're going to have log of negative 2. This is log of negative 5. And that is no good. Uh, x equals 3, or x equals negative 3, is extraneous. So the only solution is x equals 4. All right, let's do another one. Solve for x if ln of x squared plus 1 minus ln of x equals 0. OK, again, we want to check for extraneous solutions. This one, we have a 0 here, so that makes our life a little bit easier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add ln of x to both sides. So that's going to give us ln of x squared plus 1 is equal to ln of x. So here we have two logarithms which are equal to each other, and they're both natural logarithms. They both have the same base. So that means their arguments have to be the same because of the one-to-one -one property of logarithms. So if ln of x squared plus 1 is equal to ln of x, that means that x squared plus 1 is equal to x. So we want to solve this for x. So we subtract x from both sides, and we get x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. Now this one's going to give us a bit of a problem, because we can't actually factor this one, or that is to say, not over the real numbers. This one is what we call irreducible. We can see that if we try to use the quadratic formula. x equals the opposite of b, so the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. So what is this going to give us? The opposite of negative 1 is 1, plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared is 1, minus 4, over 2 times a. Well, a is, a is actually equal to 1, so that's supposed to just be a 1. So that's over 2. So we get that x is equal to 1, plus or minus the square root of negative 3 over 2 or if you prefer, 1 plus or minus i square roots of 3 over 2. Now this is not in the domain, not in the domain of logarithm, uh, well, of any logarithm. So this has no solutions at all. We want to find real numbers. Our domain for these logarithm functions is the set of real numbers such that the argument is positive. And these are not real numbers. These are complex numbers. Let's do one more example. Solve for x if log base 2 of x minus 3 plus log base 2 of x is equal to 2 check for extraneous solutions. So let's do this the same way. So we're going to combine these two log base 2 terms. So it's going to be x minus 3 times x is equal to 2. So 2 is the power of 2 that gives us this product. Well that means that 
x minus 3 times x is equal to 4. So x squared minus 3x is equal to 4. Solve for x. x squared minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Factor this quadratic. x times x gives us x squared. 4 times 1 gives us 4. Minus 4 plus. We need a minus 4 here. Minus 4 plus 1 gives us the negative 3. And minus 4 times 1 gives us a negative 4. So x equals 4. x equals negative 1. Well, right away you can see x equals negative 1 is not okay. So we're going to, this one, this one is extraneous. x equals 4 is okay though. If you plug in 4 in here, you get log base 2 of 1. If you plug in 4 here, you get log base 2 of, of 4, so that's fine. But if you try to plug in a negative 1 in either of these, you'll get a negative argument. So the only solution is x equals 4.